a self-described computer whiz has told jurors how he had a nervous breakdown from the stress of cooperating with the FBI to hack into the secure communication system he built for accused Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Christian Rodriguez, 32, returned to the witness stand in Brooklyn for the second day on Thursday as the federal trial of Guzman continued on charges of trafficking drugs to the U.S. as the leader of Mexico's Sinaloa cartel. The witness testimonies have given a glimpse into the secretive and often violent workings of the cartel, one of the most powerful drug trafficking operations in the world. Prosecution witness Rodriguez who said he worked for Guzman, 61, from 2008 to 2012 and built a system allowing members of the cartel to communicate securely using private servers, Nokia phones and Blackberries. Share this article. Share. The Colombian-born Rodriguez told jurors he was approached in Bogota in 2011 by FBI agents who told him they knew he worked for Guzman and that he was in serious trouble. Rodriguez said he agreed to cooperate with them the same day. He gave the FBI the passwords to the secure servers he built for Guzman, as well as for software he secretly installed on some of his associates' phones that allowed Guzman to spy on them, Rodriguez has testified. Rodriguez said he handled Guzman's requests to install spyware on about 50 special phones he wanted to track. The software allowed Guzman to monitor users' calls and texts and even to turn on a phone's microphone and record at any time without the user's knowledge. The technician said he heard from associates of Guzman that their boss treated the technology like his toy, often using it to hear what people said about him immediately after he called them. The value of Rodriguez's assistance to prosecutors became obvious this week as jurors were presented with a slew of Guzman's phone calls and text messages intercepted thanks to his cooperation. Much of the evidence in the trial so far has consisted of spoken testimony from witnesses whose credibility Guzman's lawyers have done their best to undermine. Many of the intercepted communications jurors heard this week, however, appear unambiguously to show Guzman discussing high-volume drug trafficking and bribing officials. Guzman's lawyers have portrayed their client as a scapegoat for what they called Sinaloa's real leader, Ismael El Mayo Zambada, who also faces U.S. charges but remains at large. Rodriguez said he fled to the United States in fear of his life after learning that Guzman's associates knew he was cooperating with the FBI. He said he later had a nervous breakdown from stress, was hospitalized and underwent electroconvulsive treatment. Under cross-examination by one of Guzman's lawyers, Eduardo Balarezzo, Rodriguez admitted family difficulties also contributed to his stress and nervous breakdown. In a move to protect Rodriguez, court sketch artists have been ordered not to draw his face and photos of him introduced into evidence have been pixelated. Among the cartel communications presented in court this week were Guzman's text messages to his beauty queen wife Emma Coronelis Puro, in which they fussed over their twin daughters, touched on logistics for drug smuggling, and shared encouragement as he fled a raid by Mexican authorities on a mansion in the resort town of Cabo San Lucas, Baja. On the day of the raid, Guzman told his wife about the escape in one in several messages shown to jurors at the trial in federal court in Brooklyn. It all happened very fast, Guzman wrote, according to government translations. I saw them pounding on the door next door but was able to jump out. Guzman said in the messages that he needed a new set of clothes 
shampoo and some black dye for his mustache I love you, love, he wrote. Talk to you soon. She responded at one point, I hope so darling In an earlier exchange, Guzman described one of his daughters as fearless, adding, I'm going to give her an Alaska 47 so she can hang with me. The daughter was then six months old. Coronelis Puro, who was crowned the 2007 Coffee and Guava Queen of Durango, was present in court again on Thursday. The trial began November 13 and is expected to last a few more weeks. Guzman faces life in prison if convicted.